I think we are live. I think we are live. Whoa, whoa. You know what I didn't do? I didn't, uh, uh, we are going live. And voice activation. Here we go. We are live, everyone. What is going on? It is RSGOTC, and we are on, I believe, episode 77. Yeah, it has gone a long time now, and we got Toof here again. Our buddy Toof. How you doing there, Toof? I'm doing. All right. Well, that's always good. It's always good to be doing. <clears throat> so, um, well, let's let's take a look at some things here. Uh at uh at some stuff what we have tonight basically uh we mainly have game of thrones talk because that's what's gonna happen every week until game of thrones is over and uh since it's gonna be a short episode it's really just game of thrones talk a couple of things here and there about some games and then um of course epic game slapping steam in the face with the mighty dong uh of uh i guess reality but anyways, let's uh, let's go into the opening scene and we'll go from there. So stick around. Alright, so it looks like uh, it looks like we weren't here last week. So, you know, if we recap on the Thrones of last week, um, you know, I just don't really, I, I don't have much I can talk about with it. it. Really, wasn't that interesting? Would you agree? What last week's Game of Thrones? Yeah, I thought it was all, very interesting. It was uh, a lot of subtle stuff. I guess, you know, I guess a lot of subtle stuff, but it's stuff we kind of, like, already knew. You know? I thought it was a good episode. It was, it was. But what we have to talk about uh, is we can kind of skip right through that and go directly into the fact that this episode was... Damn. It was insane. Now, you said it, you had a, an issue with it being too dark, right? Yeah, it was definitely too dark. Um, I mean, maybe I, maybe I have my brightness too much up on my screen. I, I don't really have that issue. Um, but that, that could be very possible that I have my brightness up too much. Uh, it was crazy though. It was all out crazy. Um, and no spoilers, of course. Uh, but everyone's kind of going to spoil it for you anyways, if you open up Twitter or Facebook. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, I think the last week's episode, the most catching part that, of course, for everyone was the sex scene between someone and someone. That's it. That was it, you know? A lot of people uh, Googling legality of age right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and the funny thing is, is I don't think people uh, realize... Like, for one, I love how uh, someone was saying to me uh, when I was showing Daenerys, like, uh, they're, they're, they're on, they're just starting season two. And, um, uh, you know, he got to see, the, you know, the nude scene at the end again. And he's like, she, how is she even doing that? She can't even be 18. I'm like, she's 23, dude. Um, you know, people have to realize that some people are uh, older than they look, you know. I'll, 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 not only that, but you figure from the beginning of Game of Thrones, she was so she's still tiny, but she was so tiny and young, and we've watched them all kind of grow up right in front of us, and we still kind of don't realize Game of Thrones has been on for yes, like, yeah, ten years, something like that. At this point. Not ten years, but close to it. And um, here we're on what season eight, and we've had a year skip, so nine, ten years. It's it's about nine, about nine. So we're almost there. Um, and you're right. They are 100% right that 
I feel it skipped on it. Although, I, I feel like, did we, has it been a full, each season been a full year apart from each other? I'm guessing so. Wow. wow. Yeah, they were, except for this last year, they didn't have anything going. Yeah, which is really which, awkward. I mean, it aggravated me because, you know, it's like, hey, we only get six episodes for this final. And we had to wait two goddamn years for it. Yeah. If seeing yeah. something like tonight, I get it. All right, it's fine. You got it, you know. You, you, sometimes you just got to go the distance, if you would. You know, uh, sometimes you just got to wait until you get what's right. It's the best thing I could say about it. You know, it's it's the same, same thing with a game. You know, you, you don't want to rush it out. And I'm sure they didn't have to take as long as they did. But, um, but yeah, no. This, this, uh, this episode, I... Uh, I, I was sitting there on the edge of my seat the entire time. Would you Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I think so. After, yeah, I, mean, I don't think a part that wasn't really kind of like, oh shit, what's next? Or I'm bored. Or, Can we get past this thing? It was all just like, what the shit's going to happen next? Yeah, I actually found myself almost wanting to skip, but not. Nah, I'm like, I don't want to skip, but I do want to know what happens like right now. I need to know, but I, I can't. I'm going to wait. But I need to know. But I'm going to wait. Fuck, this is so tough. You know? <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it felt like to me. Um, uh, it, it, It's like... What I uh, expected, though, kind of to a degree did happen. But I kind of didn't expect... It all to happen now. You know? I thought they were going to lead us on a little longer. But I discussed with you earlier what I think is going to happen. And where the remaining two episodes or three episodes lie. You know? And... I mean, I think we all have to assume... That there is, to some degree, a happy ending. You know what I mean? I don't think so. You don't think so? I, I think... I think... When I say a happy ending, um, like, okay, in, in, in what happened here, uh, there could be a lot more, but there were not. You know what I mean? There were a lot. Don't get me wrong. There could have been those extra more. And, uh, I think you're still gonna be getting those extra more, but still with the few prevailing. You know what I mean? Right. I think that's, I think, and you know, actually, I don't even know why I'm saying it like this. Uh, let's just, let's just bring it out. I mean, this is a prediction. This is a straight up prediction. Uh, it's, I think, you know, uh... Well, I guess no, I don't want... Uh, well, no, because I guess it kind of does spoil what happened, I guess. To a degree. But, um... But, yeah, I, I just... Uh, regardless, I think... Something's gonna happen, but, I, you know, I, I actually wonder... Um... I wonder if whoever would just turn on whoever. And just be like, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if they might, you know, when you when you have, you know, you know, it, it's like th let's think of like let's uh let's just think if you had a state, right? And there were 11 cities in that state and 10 of the 11 cities didn't like the mayor of that state. They, I feel like they'd get, I feel like even the mayor of that, uh, of, uh, I mean that state, that city, even the mayor of that city or whatever the hell, you know, would, uh, their cronies, I think would still be like, yeah, you know what? You got something wrong with you, man. Fuck off. You know what I'm saying? Right. I wonder if that's, you know, you gotta wonder if that's, if that's where we're going. You have to. Um, you know, part, you know, it's, it's funny part of me about when it comes to like spoilers, right? 
um, it, it's it's kind of annoying at the same time because like it drives me nuts. Like for instance, uh, you know that that person that sits there, you know, like ten years later, you know, I never seen that movie. You know, you just kind of fucked it up for me. Oh yeah, I did. Well, tough fucking shit. <laughs> like uh, it's been ten years, bro. You kind of should have seen it. Like, if I talk about season any any season before this of Thrones, and you get mad that I spoiled something, that's that's on you, man. It's been two damn years, you know, from the last season. You know, that's not. I you know I I don't care. I don't care that much. But when it comes to spoilers, I'm not gonna sit there and and be like, oh, you never saw it. I, even though it came out 15 years ago, well, I don't want to ruin it for you. Fuck that. I'm going to talk about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. But there's people actually out there. There's actually people out there that really do get pissed off at things like that. And it's like, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> you can't get mad at that in the slightest. Like, I don't know. Um, so, like I said, you know, my uh, my roommate is is watching, like, he's on season two right now. And man, he's just got so much in store for him. So much crazy shit to happen. And see, one thing I've been hearing from people that don't watch it is they're like, I watched the first couple episodes and I was so bored. I was so this, I was so that I gave up on it. It's like, no, you don't just stop there. You at least have to watch the first freaking season. At least. Give that a chance. Yeah, but you know, it, it. this was, let me let me say though, this was a tough show to just start and go. Okay. Uh, it, know, it hooked me for moment, fucking for, moment. You, for you, moment. yes. For a lot of people, it took actually. You know what season hit them? Three. It was season three. Because um, the constant getting attached to somebody and then them dying. I uh, didn't really stop until about season three, and that really put off a lot of people. You know. I don't know. Let's heard of what it was I, mean, I wasn't bothered by it right you weren't that's 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 the key thing you know the eyes and the use you know i i can be whatever majority and not a majority but a, a, there are a portion of people it was off-putting to uh there's quite a few people i've even spoken to you know for sure where that that was a big thing big annoyance for them um uh, eventually, some of them pe- prevailed through, and they just went through. And I think some of them have turned back to play it and, or to watch it more now. Um, so yeah, in that sense, uh, it's kind of good that people are kind of going back to it. But um, yeah, some people really it, it turned them off. They get you know for two straight seasons, they get hooked to someone, and boom, they die. Hooked to someone, boom, they die. Um, uh, like you said, me, I was kind of expecting it. It's, you know, medieval gets real crazy. Uh, I think one of the best things this show does is, in a sense, is how it keeps people coming back. Like, you, you thought that was it for them. But it ends up not being. You know? Even the characters that have died, I mean... And you know they're gonna die, whatever. At this point, it still adds to it. It's like you still root for them. They die off, and yes, it's not now hindsight twenty twenty. I know they die off, but it doesn't detract from the overall enjoyment of the whole, the whole damn show. I think people that get just you know detracted by that probably are the ones that are easily amused by like maybe licking those little doorknob things with the springs and sitting there doing that all day long. It's probably the same mental capacity for somebody that's entertained by that that can't get into the Game of Thrones because of that. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I just, um, I don't know what it is. You know, I don't know. Some people are weird with things, right? You know why my mom doesn't like The Office? Are you ready for this? Did I ever tell you why she doesn't like The Office? I thought you liked it. No. It's She likes Seinfeld. She likes friends. What did all those shows have? What those kind of shows have? When when a joke would happen, what would happen? Laugh track. Boom. That's it. So apparently if the office had a laugh track, she would be way more in it. And I got on her about that. I actually gave her a lot of shit for that. 
because I said, let me get this straight. You need people to tell you when to laugh. No. Yeah, you do. If you can't enjoy a show without a laugh track, that's because that means you need people laughing for you to laugh. Have you ever been to a live comedy show? Yeah. So let's say, you know, and we'll pick a comedian, whatever one. They're good on album, whatever. They have good stuff. But there's something about it when you're there, actually at the club, other people are laughing at the stuff. The kind of general interaction, it, it raises the amount of the level of uh, how funny it is when you're there enjoying with other people. So the whole thing with laugh tracks is you're not watching it blank slate, relying on everything, and you're less prone to kind of getting tickled humor because it's almost like a, an enabler to say, yes, you can laugh at this thing. Right. And it's, in fact, funny, so yes, you can laugh. And I so totally get that. Laugh tracks on there. Even if the joke without the laugh track would still be funny, it gives it that enhancement. So when you look at The Office, and yes, I can understand why they don't have a laugh track, because it's supposed to be kind of like a mockumentary type thing, following yeah. around, whatever. I get that part of it, and why it wouldn't fit. But all the same, you can't really detract from not liking it because of that, and not finding it funny because of that, because it just doesn't give it the extra boost. I, I, can, I can understand, but... The, the fact that there's actually a lot of shows that she throws to the side because she can't get that laugh track. It's like, well, you know, it, it, like I said, it's like you're being... I know exactly what you're talking about, though. Because there are plenty of movies I'll watch where yeah, I'll laugh a little bit. But if I'm watching it with someone and they get a good laugh going, I'm right there with that shit. Like, when I watched Bad Grandpa in the movies, I laughed way harder. And when I watch it on my own, it just, I, I understand it totally, but to be like, I can't watch that show. No, I can't. It doesn't have a laugh track and I just, I, I can't get into it without the laugh track. It's like, how? I understand it makes it funny, but you still, if you found it funny with people laughing, you still find the joke funny without the people laughing. It's just how open you are about it. You know, how are you, how, how loud, how much are you going to? you know, laugh and then do the, you know, the little snort thing, you know, on your own. Probably not. You're probably watching and be like, <laughs> you know, under your breath, <laughs> you know, something like that. But you're not going to get that, you know, where Bob's next to you fucking, Wah! and you're sitting there, going, Wah! you know, right along with him. Yes, that happens. I totally get it. But I would never throw away a show and be like, no, I can't get into that show because it doesn't have a fucking laugh track. Get the hell out of here. Um, so, uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like that. Like, you know, certain people are thrown off by certain things, uh, when, you know, so that's why even with the Game of Thrones thing, you know, as much as you see, see the okay with someone not liking a show in a sense because of the laugh track. Well, you gotta also see the other side of people who can't get into it because of a show because, they can't seem to get attached to a character. You know? That's the thing. Game of Thrones gives you so many characters to attach yourself to. How could you only be attached to one? If you're only attached to one character, and there's several episodes that are on or very minimally shown. Well, in the well, beginning, it's kind of tough to say. Any show, because if you're, if you're, you know, any show, you like the one character. Now, one character, let's say it's a woman happens to get pregnant so they write her off the show while she's having the baby and taking care of the baby and it's a newborn so you don't have her for a good majority of the season or that season at all right at right. that point the show is no longer relevant I mean, that just it, that just it's impossible unless you are just so simple minded and easily entertained there's no way that one single character should be the only reason that you hold to and enjoy a show yeah but you have to admit we didn't start until like maybe even the second or halfway through the second season start getting a lot of good characters I thought the characters were fine from right off especially like Littlefinger I mean holy shit running his brothel and everything else and you know he's a player and you had Varys the fucking eunuch and <laughs> of and all of you had all of them it was built right from the start Right from the start. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I agree. Look, I love the show. You know me. I love, I love the show. Um, I personally, uh, you know, there's a few people that aren't into it, 
but for the most part, everyone watches it. Um, there's one guy at work calls it fantasy. That shit drives me nuts. It's not fucking fantasy. Yes, there are fantasy elements in it, but it's not fucking fantasy. Okay? It's not like I'm sitting here when Guardian Leviosa and that shit, like Harry Potter, okay? It's, it's more medieval than anything. Wouldn't you agree? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last part. It's more medieval than anything, wouldn't you agree? To a point, yeah, but when, when, once you start getting past the first parts of the seasons, it really becomes a, a bit more of a fantasy because of the White Walkers and the dragons and things like that. That so it's it's like a half and half. It, it, no, and right, it is, and that's what I was saying though. Like, uh, you know, like, oh, I, you know, I don't like fantasy. It's like, yeah, but we're not watching like World of Warcraft here. You know, it, it there, there's a lot of medieval elements to this. Uh, between the brothels, the castles, the weaponry that is available. It is very medieval. You have to admit that. I mean, really, think about it. The dungeons, the man the mannerism that are the mannerisms, the uh the sheer like uh like or not not the sheer, the uh like I said of the equipment, the weapons, the armor, everything. There's nothing that says about it like, oh, look, he wears a magical cloak and it makes him invisible. Or, you know, he wears a, a veil, a, a small, tiny veil, and nothing can penetrate it. No, they're wearing fucking big, giant suits of armor. You know what I'm saying? Like, big-ass swords. Yeah, but you feel like that one guy with the eye patch, the fire god worshiper, he came back to life. Jon Snow comes back to life after a knife to the fucking heart. Oh yeah, like that. So there's some. Uh, there is some. some the White Walkers getting all risen up to fucking live again. You know, so there's, well, there's no, yeah, there is some definite fantasy elements, um, but I wouldn't exactly even put them in fantasy. Like I would put that more in the zombie category. If anything, we're in like a zombie zombie esque kind of category here, and like an overlord. Can you still put that in fantasy? Yeah. But, like I said, I think the thing that makes it more fantasy-esque is because there's dragons. But, uh, as we know, you know, that's not really the main focus of the show anymore. It's to a degree, you know what I mean? Right. Especially now. <laughs> huh. So, um, and if anyone thought that was a spoiler, no, that wasn't a spoiler. Um, you'd have to say so you won't know, because... You have no idea what the hell happened. So I guess that means your ass better watch it, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that's the thing is, I know that if I didn't watch it, I'd have to stay away from every thread of fucking possible social media. And even walking around, you know there's going to be somebody talking about it wherever you're working or going to the store or something. There's going to be somebody fucking talking about it. You know, that's so why... You have to, that's the reason why I watch it. I'd rather prefer to... Uh, do the Netflix thing and do the whole season at once and just watch it at my leisure exactly how long I want to watch it. But with this, I can't. I have to watch it every damn episode you, as it airs. You can do that with shows like like everyone's all about this whole Endgame thing. Like, don't spoil Endgame. You know what? It's going to happen. I don't give a fuck. There's people standing outside the movie theaters fucking yelling out spoilers. You know? Like, which is kind of fucked up. But it's like you know, to me, I, I that doesn't ruin the movie for me. I still have to see it. I mean, yeah, spoilers can fuck some things up, but I still want to see it. I don't know. I, I, I don't go crazy over the whole spoiler thing. I think that gets a little overplayed, if you ask me. Um, You know, I understand no one exactly wants to deal, you know, they, they want to watch it. But uh, certain things, you're just not going to be able to get away from the spoilers. So you have, uh, like, Endgame. You're going to you're gonna run into spoilers. Game of Thrones, you're going to run into spoilers. Dexter? Probably not. Breaking Bad, you probably run into spoilers. Now? Probably not. If your best bet is if you're worried about spoilers, just don't even come close to watching this show. Wait, like, fucking two more years to watch the goddamn show. And then by that point, you have forgotten every damn spoiler any motherfucker ever told you. Am I right? Right. 
That's it. I mean, that's the true thing. Like, do you know why I was so good? Like, I didn't, I didn't have any spoilers for Dexter because it was fucking ages after Dexter was done. I think that I that I watched it. Like, it wasn't, or, yeah, the only one. There, there was, uh, there was a show I had to catch up on. I think this is one of the few shows, Game of Thrones, is where I was way behind on it and I caught up with everyone. But I wasn't paying attention to it beforehand. Um, Breaking Bad, there was always spoilers. Everyone wanted to see what the next damn episode was. Um, Better Call Saul's not popular enough for spoilers, it seems like. No one fucking has spoilers about that show. Have you watched that at all? Which one? Better Call Saul. I uh, first maybe season and a half. I, I haven't caught up with the rest of it. It was, it was all right. It's all right. It's a little on the slow side, to be honest with you. I love the dude Mike though. The guy who plays. Um, he was the guy in like Beverly Hills Cop. You remember Beverly Hills Cop? The. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Remember the guy? You know who that guy is that I'm talking about. Um, he's like he he was the hitman in Breaking Bad. Um, and Beverly. Okay, yeah, that guy, man. I like whatever. Yeah, that that's a great dude, man. You know who? You know, you know who he was in Beverly Hills Cop, right? Yeah, just I mean, what was his first one, second one? And because it was, I I think it was the first one. Yeah. It was the first one when when he flew out to to California and he didn't know the guys and he got thrown thrown through the window and and the guys were like you know treating him like a piece of shit remember so they because they didn't they didn't know him yet um so uh but yeah that that was wild seeing him like back then man. He looks so different when he had hair. Um, but that guy, man, he he's real good. And that's the one guy that really makes Better Call Saul. So, like, I don't know. The, the show is, like, really slow and without, you know, him doing some kind of action. But <laughs> it is, do you remember that episode in Better Call Saul? Uh, when when the dude that chart was selling like some kind of pills or something to the one dude, and he bought that ridiculously stupid Hummer. Was it the yellow Hummer that uh, that, that yeah, guy was yeah. like corporate America? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my god, I mean I know we're going a little off uh, off tangent here because I don't think we can as much as I wanted to talk about Game of Thrones for straight up like a good section of time. Can only go so much, especially if you have to kind of keep it spoiler free, you know. Spoiler free is a bitch to do, um, but yeah, I, I think I think the biggest thing of Thrones tonight was just, uh, uh, of course, the one thing, duh, hello, but um, I think it was wild watching it commence. I didn't. I honestly didn't expect the first thing to go away that quick. Did you? No. Right. I thought there was gonna be some kind of. Oh shit! That shit was just like, hey. Oh fuck. <laughs> like, that was quick, and it had me really kind of wondering, in that whole episode, like, wow. Are we just gonna? Watch them win. That eh, that's it, because that's what it really seemed like, didn't it? And how about when he raised his hands? You remember that part, right, dude? That was fucking intense, and it made me realize where the where the where everyone else was hiding was probably the worst place but who knew he he had control over that too you know so yeah it was interesting that was crazy man that was that was probably one of the craziest parts for me but um i got so excited at one part 
but the way they built it and how much time was left, I knew it wasn't going to do anything. I know you got to know what part I'm talking about. Obviously, I'm keeping it very vague as I as we try to. Of um, course. Um, uh, but, yeah, yeah, and that smirk that arose right after that, like, yeah, uh, okay, whatever, I knew that was going to happen. Um, uh, get ready, bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that was crazy, man. I was, I started celebrating right there, and I, I should have known, I should have known that there was no cause for celebration right there. You know? You know, it's, it's going to be interesting how it's all played out. Oh, it is. It is. Um, so I know we wanted to keep this on the short side tonight. So let's uh, let's let's finish off with our final topic here, um, and that is: Did you see the Epic Games kind of laid the SmackDown on Steam, Valve, whatever? Did you see that? I did not. Here's the thing. What have I been saying that Valve's going to have no choice, or Steam, whatever you want to call it, will have no choice to do? I mean, I've been talking about that revenue share, haven't I? Yeah. They're going to have to change it. Well, whether Steam likes it or not, more and more companies are still saying, fuck you, Steam, and just going to Epic. And Epic straight up said... You know, we'll stop these exclusivity deals if you just lower that price to 88%. Or, I mean, uh, or, or just take it and give them that 88%. Then we wouldn't even be dealing with this. Got a point. You can, you can sit there and be greedy until you have nothing left. Or you could just give the fuck in. What do you think needs to happen? I hope Steam grabs a hold of a huge title on exclusivity and makes it permanent exclusivity. Pays them out the ass to do it. Just so I can say, fuck you, Epic Store. Why don't you feel that, that Steam should do something more about the the share revenue? Because their share revenue is a really shitty scheme. Who's going to sell more games? Doesn't uh, That's not a matter of what we're talking about oh, here. It is. Here. It is. Yeah, Steam, Steam can sell more games. I mean, let's just say you got uh, 12% of a cut of the Epic Store take, let's just say figuratively, of your game, and you sell 100,000 units. Steam takes 18%, you sell a million units. Which one's going to give you more profit? I, I understand, but I, th I think, you know, you have... I think the amount of hard-up people that won't buy from the Epic Store is a lot less than the people who will. Oh, I don't think so. There's a lot of people giving the finger to Epic Store. There is. But, you know, there's also a bunch of people who sit there and say, oh, I won't support them, I won't do that, da 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 And they're sitting there playing games that are Epic games. Or they're sitting... Who's pirating them? Huh? Uh, I don't, you know, that doesn't look good on your end anyways. But, I mean... Mm -hmm. I'm not the one pirating, I just don't play the stupid games. No, I know. No, people no. pirate the games and play them that way instead of paying Epic. So what about so the Unreal kind of Engine? Driving up piracy again, when it was really starting to go way down, because games were getting to be affordable and so on and so forth. But now they're bringing it right back up because they're a bunch of fucking pricks, and Epic Games deserves to go out of business because they're just fucking pricks. I see. I think a little differently. I think that Steam needs to come down on their fucking revenue. They, the, they I'm, Brian, I'm not down with monopolies, man. They've had a monopoly for basically forever. With this shit. There's GOG, there's Uplay, there's Origins, there's other ones like that. Yeah, but it's almost a monopoly on their end, the way they've got it. So, yeah. the the point is, you know, look, you're, you're cap you love capitalism, man. That's capitalism at its finest. Right there. I mean, should we start forcing everybody to buy Nintendo because PlayStation and Xbox are making too much money? Nintendo's not making enough, so we should force everybody to start buying shit strictly on Nintendo? Fuck no. No, we're not forcing... This is straight up. This is straight up the market economy that we all talk about. This is how everyone wants it with capitalism. There's your capitalism right there. You got a company that said, "Fuck off." We're gonna sit there and give them a bunch of fucking money, and we'll see who runs this. We'll see what happens. But uh, I'll tell you right now, it's definitely fucking. You know, sucks on both ends. 
it sucks. Makes it sucks. easy for me. You know, I don't have to waste money on a stupid ass game full price. I can just wait out the year for exclusivity and pay it fucking bargain basement when I hit Steam. And laugh because they lost a shitload of money doing it because they were idiots taking money up front and thinking they're gonna do the best thing in the world. I'm pretty sure they uh they have an engine that runs tons of different games that like regardless whether you think you're buying not buying a game from them or not that you are like to some degree they're getting a share of a lot of people's money that are sitting there and boycotting it so whether people like it or not they're getting some kind of money even uh, if it's yeah. on steam because they have they own the rights i forget what engine i think it might be the unreal engine but they they uh they own some engine that is used in multiple games so anytime you buy a game using that engine, boom, they get some cut of that. Well, hopefully Steam creates their own engine. Oh, fuck em. They did have their own engine, I believe. I believe that's the one Half-Life and all that shit is on. That's it's about a new one. I hope they build a new one that's just better than the Unreal and better than all that bullshit. Just fight fire with fire. Stomp the fucking necks out of this epic bullshit and get rid of them. I guess, but, you know... They're not. They've already ruined the franchise for me. And what more? I mean, fuck Epic. I, I don't give a fuck what they put out. I refuse to ever buy a game from them. Ever. Because they keep stealing the exclusivity? And they steal your information from Steam and all that shit. And they're shies for business practice. And Fortnite's nothing more than a gelatin fucking molded piece of shit cunt motherfucker child game that nobody should play because it has absolutely zero fucking relevance or enjoyment. And I don't like Epic. I don't like their attempts. I don't like whatever the fuck they're doing. I don't like them. They can fuck themselves. I guess. Anybody joins logs, you know, joins the ranks with them, can fuck themselves too. I will not buy their shit. I I think that Steam needs to come down, come come down on the road, get, give some more revenue. That's all. Even if it's not the eighty eight percent, give them give them more revenue. They're being shitty, greedy bastards. You can't call Epic shitty and not call Steam shitty. They're both they're both doing shitty things. One's you know, Steam doesn't give away my personal information. It works. They have decent sales on shit. I can plug in keys from other sites or I wonder other or other places and play it on their shit and it works just fine. I have a massive library that still works just fine with them. I have no it reason does. to not like Steam. I, I know, I understand that. But I understand that you may like them, but on the game developer's side. And as my friend has been looking, you know, into all that stuff because he's developing a game, they need to come the fuck down on on their share. They need to give more to the creator. They're just a di digital distribution platform. There's no reason they need to take as much as they do. Like, th I, what is it, 30 some odd percent? You don't need that. You didn't make the damn game. You're a digital distribution platform. Take 20%. 22%. Fuck it. That's getting a little high, but I mean, I, cap it at 220. You know? I, that's all I'm saying. And you know what? If they did that, guess what? They'd wipe Epic out. That's all. Simple as that. If they do that... Epic's gone. No one will go back to Epic. No games will go exclusive to Epic. Because they'll get close enough revenue share that they won't give a shit. You see what I mean? I think all the failed sales that they're having already is making people start to regret this whole exclusivity bullshit they signed up for. It could possibly, it could possibly be maybe on the exclusivity side. But let's talk about just wiping out Steam, or I mean um, Epic in general. Just wiping it completely out. Do like, how did Walmart wipe out the pharmacies? By how, selling in large bulk and undercutting ever living share and everything. Not even selling in large bulk. They undercut the point to the point where they actually lost money. That's right. They sold so cheap, they took a hit and lost money. Long enough just to make sure that they could put everyone out of business. And the fucking second everyone went out of business, they hiked up the damn prices. Smart business. So, the point is, Epic's trying to kind of do the same thing. They won't have the same foothold, understandable. But, 
Steam has the capital and the foothold, and if they just did that, they can easily do the same fucking thing. Except, they don't exactly even have to raise it. They can even have it at a higher percentage. They could say 22% is what we're taking. And guess what? They'd still get them. But once you're starting to hit 30s and more, companies start fucking shying away once they see some place giving 88 per, um, you know, giving the, the creator 88% and only taking 12 So I say 20%. That's a good cut. It's still 10 per, It's only 10% less than they're taking now. Am I wrong? Why not? Why not? Steam should have to give up a damn thing. Everyone's got to change eventually, man. You got to keep with the times. That's why, you know, that's why, like, you know, when when someone says, I've been doing this for X amount of years, I could give two shits. A lot of those people that say, I've been doing this for X amount of years, can't get with new technology and are halfway fucking lost. You know? So it's the same kind of thing. You know, sh- shit's got to change eventually. I mean, hell, could you imagine if hard drives still cost what they did back in the day? But I'm just saying. It has nothing to do with, like, an Epic store or a Steam store. I'm I'm saying that Steam can't stay the same way forever. They're going to have to make some changes to what they pay out their creators. And I think 20% is well enough for them to take. Still more than... The whole thing. Do we sell 10,000 units and get X amount from game, the Epic Games? Or do we sell a million units, 150,000 units, whatever, 10 times more? And take a slight hit from Steam. Which one are we going to make more money on? Steam. That's if it's going... That, okay, maybe on a AAA title like Metro. I don't know why the hell they did it. Okay. On indie titles. I mean, who's been more kind to indie titles than Steam? And because of Steam being kind of indie title, that's when you start seeing that go over to... PlayStation and Xbox trying to jump on that bandwagon. But the indie scene is existing purely because of Steam. I understand Steam plays a big part. I just I I I just guess I disagree with like not now I don't think they have to go to eighty eight percent. I think that's uh it's weird the Epic's trying to say, you know, the Epic even punches in and say, Hey, if you just do this, we won't have exclusivity deals. Why are you trying to push them to eighty eight percent revenue share? Like, are you trying to get them down that low, then jump out of the game, and then, you know, not even have your epic launcher anymore? You gotta think, that might be a route they're trying to play. I don't think so, but it'd be pretty wild if that was the route they're trying to go, right? Could you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, we gotta change it. They're trying to dictate shit that they think they're big enough bridges to do so, and they're simply not. No, no, in, in that sense, no. But, you know, they did start... They did start a strong conversation, and it's something that Steam is going to have to consider giving more revenue share. And and by the way, the way Steam works is if it's like, okay, if you sell X amount, you know, we only take this much. If you sell this amount, we only take this much. If we sell this amount, we only take this much. So you kind of have to work to get that lower to the point of what they'll take. You see what I mean? So if you don't sell, if your sales aren't that crazy good... They're going to take an even bigger chunk from you. Which is kind of shitty if you ask me. Well, maybe that's that 30% mark. Uh, I got to see what the lowest is. and It's a little higher than 30%. But not much higher. Um, Then it goes down. I think like if you sell an absolutely stupid amount, they take like 25%. But you have to sell, like, you have to be someone like a Call of Duty or something that's going to sell a retardedly huge amount, you know? Maybe Grand Theft Auto. They sell like, from the Rockstar store. They sell from everywhere. And they still sell on Steam. Yeah. The only thing is they weren't making money off of it, that they're allowed to go to Steam and not just say, hell no, you're going to buy it only from the Rockstar website. Well, of course. But they're still making a hell of a lot of money from Steam. No, so yeah. They're still going to yeah. sell it on Steam. I, I see that. No, yeah. Um, look, I, I think it is kind of crazy that some of these companies don't, you know, budge. I do, I do agree. Um, you know, I, I think it's real stupid. They sit there and do the, an ex- why would you do an exclusivity deal? It's one thing to launch it on that launcher as well, 
But to do an exclusivity deal, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. I think people are, I, I think the companies were really stupid with that. And it will bite them in the ass. And honestly, I don't take that out on Epic. Honestly, you shouldn't take that out on Epic. You know who you should take that out on? I'd take it out on the devs and Epic. I would take it out mainly on the devs. They're the ones who cut everyone else out because they wanted to be greedy. Everything I, I turns. I shouldn't even blame the both of them. I don't think Epic's single handedly to be at fault. The devs are. And like I said, it's the whole Metro thing. I love Metro 1 and uh, the 2033 and then the last light. And I was really looking forward to the next installment. And because of this, I will never play. It will never happen. People Even when it comes on Steam? Steam? People bought it on Steam. And all of a sudden they yank it and say, nope, it's going to be strictly on this one for, what is it, a year? Right. No, right. They can kiss my ass. That is shitty business practice. That no, yeah. Yeah, no, and that, that I agree with, and I think actually a lot of people agree with. Um, I think if you, if they would have started out saying, hey, look, it's going to be a Steam exclusive or a, 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 a Epic exclusive from the beginning, they would have been fine. But it's because they didn't. They pulled it, and they fucked people over. So I agree with you on that. I definitely agree with you on that. But um, anyways, I, I think, you know, we could go back and forth about this all day. I think we discussed enough about it. It's getting quite late. I know you wanted to make this a bit of a shorter episode because you got to get up early and we've had uh, this Game of Thrones lasted for so long. So, uh, I, th you know, I don't really know what else we could really say about Epic. It's going to be an ongoing thing. We'll see what happens with Steam. Uh, remember, like I said, Epic did call Steam out and said, look, you don't want this to happen. You better lower your shit. And I think there might be something. I think Steam might break at some point. But who says Steam can't say, fuck yeah, we'll do it. Goodbye, Epic. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, let's raise this shit back up. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? It could be anyway. But that's all I have. You have anything, you have anything else for the night? That's probably all I got. Yeah, that's all we got, too. So thanks all for watching. Thanks for coming out. And we will see you next week, hopefully. Because who knows? Who knows? Sometimes we are on, sometimes we're not. Just gotta play it by ear, huh? Well, you can always watch and follow Twitter at Ready Set Game 87. But thanks all, and let's hit the outro opening, whatever you want to call it, and we'll see you next time.